underlay is a very important part of embroidery and it, it attaches uh, your backing to your material so it can stabilize that area. Um, it can also tack down the nap of the material so it can smooth out that area and it can also build up your stitching so it stays up out of the fabric a little bit more. And there are several different options for your underlay, but uh, they do those things in varying degrees. So let's discuss those uh, different types and see what's going to work best for different situations. So right now I just have some lettering up on screen and I don't have any um, underlay set to it. You can affect underlay in a couple of different places. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to go down to underlay to show you um, one of the places. So one place you can affect it is in properties by selecting on underlay and then you've got your options here. Um, you'll also see them available on the property bar. So you've got, again, a couple of different places to access that stuff. I will uh, access it through the object property window um, just so that you can see the properties of those different underlay settings because you can modify how they work. So I'm going to uh, just use primary for right now to show you. Um, there is a primary and a secondary. The, the only difference is when they sew. Primary sews first, secondary sews second. I'm not going to go in the order that they come in the drop down. I'm going to go in more of an order of a kind of least aggressive to most aggressive underlay. So the first one I want to look at is center walk. And what center walk does is it walks down the center of your element. Now in uh, the design that's on screen right now, you can see that there are some stitching, uh, some pieces that just stitch down the middle. Uh, for instance, so let me highlight this again, uh, right down here in the M, here in the E, those aren't actually underlay. They can kind of work a little bit like underlay, but all that really is is a travel stitch. So I'm starting the N, the, pardon me, the M here, and then I'm traveling down, and then I'm satining up over it. All right, I just use satin as a verb. I don't know if it really is, but we're going to pretend. All right, so now I want to go into my primary underlay and I'm going to select center walk. So center walk is just a single line of stitching. So I hit apply and it shows up on screen. So now you can see that it has that one single line of stitching going all through the form. Um, <clears throat> depending on, on your uh, selections. Um, if you use continuous, it will underlay the whole letter at one time and then come back and sew over it. If you have that turned off, it will do each segment. So one leg of the M, it does it by piece. All right, so center walk underlay. Um, it's it kind of the least amount of underlay that you can have. Now, there are very few things that I sew that don't have at least some underlay. Um, it, it does a few things. It kind of gets your thread going, uh, make sure you're really tied in before you start doing satin stitches over it, anything like that. Um, it also just gives you a little bit of, just a little bit more cleanliness to uh, your stitches. But center walk is the least amount of underlay that you can have while still having an underlay. So what is it good for? It's just one line of stitching that goes up and back and then you satin over it or fill over it depending on what type of element you have, right? Well, does it attach it to the backing? Yeah, it absolutely does. Um, so that adds some stabilization. Does it tack down nap? Not a ton, right? There's just a little bit of stitching there. So if I was doing this on a towel, it's probably not gonna give me much. Does it build up my stitching? Again, there's not a lot of stitching there. So what good is it? It's really, really good for those smaller elements, that small lettering, um, thin lines, things like that. It's really, really great for. So I tend to use center walk for smaller elements. All right, so let's go back and let's look at um, the next one. And the next one is edge walk. Well. Let's go back and look at the properties for center walk. So, sorry, uh, the property for center walk is my stitch length. Just remember that the longer the stitch, the more it stays up out of the fabric. The smaller the stitch, it, the more it sinks down in. Now, 
Because uh, you're dealing with something that kind of goes underneath your stitching, you may not want a lot of loft to it. Um, 20 points, not bad. If I'm dealing with really tiny stuff, I may start to bring that stitch length down a little bit, maybe something to like a 16. Um, just because as I'm going around curbs, as I'm dealing with those smaller pieces, um, I don't want my stitches to sort of, if they're really long, they can stay up out of the fabric and they have a little bit of give to them. So as I, they, they may flop to the side and then I, I kind of have to hide that a little bit. So the smaller stitches will sink down in the fabric a little bit more and then that's less likely to happen. So 20 points isn't a very long stitch, but when you're dealing with really tiny elements in comparison, it can be a little bit longer. So bringing that down to a, maybe a 16 might help you out for those really tiny spots. All right, so let's look at the next one. Um, the next one we're going to deal with is edge walk. Now edge walk, let's apply that real quick. Edge walk walks up one side and down the other. So here, we are again attaching it to the fabric we're doing a little bit better job of it this time because we've got each edge of things um is it is it tacking down nap um only on the edges there's nothing in the middle um is it building up my stitches no not really so again we go back to well great what is this one good for well this one is really really great for kind of cleaning up the edges of things so if I'm dealing with a more textured material, um, like a piquet knit, something like that, using an edge walk can really clean up that, that edge of those satin stitches. It kind of gives it like a, like a fence to, to pull against, so I have kind of cleaner edges on my satin stitches. Um, really, really great for that. I tend to use edge walk in some ways very similarly to the way that I use a center walk. I use it for slightly bigger areas. So I use center walk for really, really thin things, um, I use edge walk for slightly bigger things and anytime I want to clean up the edge of something. For my properties, I have the stitch length, which same everything kind of applies with stitch length uh, here as it did with center walk. And then the other thing that we have is the border margin. So the border margin, let me zoom in here real quick. The border margin is just how close to the edge these get. And if I take my ruler, I can click and drag and measure, and you can see, if I actually do it right, that this is eight points, um, which is what we have here. You have the option of absolute or percentage. Um, absolute is whatever it is, you know, don't get closer to the edge than eight points. Um, now, if you have something that's small enough, um, it will just start going to the center. Um, so if I had something that was 16 points or smaller, it, it can't get any farther away from the edge than the middle, so that's where it is. Um, you also have the uh, ability to go to percentage, which is um, make these be this percentage of the width. Typically uh, with, with edge walk, I tend to stay with absolute, um, that way you're always this far in from the edge, um, and it, it keeps it so that uh, the stitches that are going kind of perpendicular, right? Because you're, you're drawing along the edge and then you're coming back and satining across um, or filling across. It, it keeps them a certain percentage, or not a percentage, a certain exact amount from the edge. And that tends to work very, very well. Um, percentage is an option that I tend to use when I'm dealing with an underlay that goes across the form because those are far less likely to stick out from the edges. So let's take a look again. All right, so let's go back to absolute. And now let's look at one of the next ones, which is a zigzag. So a zigzag walks up the middle and zigzags back. So here we are starting to develop layers, right? We have a center. Uh, just a walk that goes up the middle and then you're coming back over the edge. So I've got a couple of layers. I'm really attaching it to the backing. I'm starting to build up my stitches and I'm starting to tack down um, any nap or texture of the fabric. This one, because you're going across the form, right? We're zigzagging back and forth across the form. I'm less likely to hang out. So I can use percentage that way it kind of, uh, stays proportional to the um, 
design itself. All right, so if one zigzag is good, two is better, maybe. Uh, double zigzag is the next one, and that one zigzags forward and zigzags back. This one's really starting to crisscross over itself. It's really starting to tack down nap. It's starting to build up my stitches. So if I was dealing with um, a very textured, uh, maybe a towel, something like this, this is something that I might consider. Now, with this, you have the ability to do more than one uh, underlay. So I might choose to do a double zigzag to start and then an edge walk to finish it up. So I've got a textured garment, again, like a towel. Maybe I do a double zigzag and then an edge walk to clean up those edges, and that can work very, very well for me. All right, so the next one over is not something I use all the time on um, lettering. I will do it occasionally if my lettering is big enough, but it's a fill underlay. Um, so let me just create a fill. Typically, fill underlay is used for kind of bigger elements. Um, and right now we've got auto underlay on, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Um, so it's automatically doing it. This has two fills. So this has a primary fill and a secondary, pardon me, a primary underlay and a secondary underlay. They both are fills and they are crisscrossing over each other. For here, you have the option of changing your border margin. So how close to the edge am I? The density of the fill underneath so you're dealing with kind of a lattice work of things underneath and then the angle so let me turn off the secondary so we're just dealing with the primary now the thing to keep in mind about this angle is it is in relation to the stitch angle so if I change the stitch angle of my fill or my stitching this this would occur with a satin stitch as well it will change if you do multiple stitch angles it will start to curve these now what I just did is not a great idea but um, you can really start to see how it's in relationship uh, how it's in relation to that stitch angle so let me delete that so that we just deal with one again and start getting something a little bit closer to normal all right let's take this back there we go so we're dealing with 90 degrees that's going to work out fairly well for me. So, uh, things to consider. With underlay, sometimes I can get away with doing things in uh, a couple of layers and then getting away with a lighter density for my top stitching. So, you will occasionally see me, um, well, I'll use a little heavier underlay and then a little lighter uh, top stitching. And oftentimes that can allow me to go across a few more types of fabric without having to edit my design so much. Um, that tends to work for me depending on the fabrics that you're working with. That may not work as well for you. So you'll need to, you know, try this out, see what's going to work well for you. Another thing to think about, I could do a primary underlay. Well, let's just take a look. So I could do a primary underlay here. Let me duplicate this. And I'll move this guy over here. So let's deal with this one. I could do a primary underlay with a density of 25. So I've got a lot of a lot of stitching in here, right? And I'm, I'm really kind of tacking that down. Or what I could choose to do is choose to do it in layers, and I could have them going opposite directions so they crisscross over each other. And my stitch count in these isn't really all that different. It's a little different, but not by much. So here I'm kind of pushing all in one direction. Here I'm pushing and pulling in multiple directions, stabilizing very, very well, and then able to go across with my top stitching. Again, you may find that doing things couple of different ways in a couple of different layers may be really helpful to you. So that's why we have that primary and that secondary underlay. Now, if all of this is just a little overwhelming, um, we do have the option of doing or enabling an auto underlay. And uh, while we were discussing this, uh, it, it came pretty clear that you know, a lot of times we use 
center walk for very small things, edge walk for slightly bigger, zigzag for slightly bigger, and fill for the really, really big stuff. Okay, why don't we let you do that automatically? And that's what auto underlay is. So if you choose to enable auto underlay, so let me enable auto underlay, hit apply, uh, these blank out because they're doing slightly different things and it's, it's basing it on the size of the element. Um, and if you click on this button, anytime you see that button, it's the properties of whatever's inside, you can see these ranges. So the first range uh, is kind of zero to 20 points. Well, that's gonna be a center walk. Okay, that makes sense. A little bit bigger is an edge walk. A little bit bigger than that, a zigzag with an edge walk to clean up the edge. And then if you go really, really big, it's going to be two crisscrossing fills. So you've got kind of, um, well, I mean, honestly, you've got a good chunk of my preferences, a good chunk of my friend Scott's preferences kind of in the software already. So we got together and said, okay, what do you do? What do you do? We kind of average all of our stuff, kind of give you the best guess at what's going to work well for the majority of things. Is it going to work all the time? No, you may need to tweak it, but you've got some really good starter points in here. All right, so that's what all this is. You have the ability to edit all these pieces if you want, but the nice thing about auto underlay is when it's enabled, as I scale my design down, it changes. So now it's just doing the edge walk. When it goes really, really small, it's just doing a center walk. When it goes really, really big, bigger than that. There we go. It's doing two crisscrossing fills. Um, and then uh, it will also pay attention to, so let's do something that has some thick thin. Um, let's do Artemis, I think will work. There we go. So here on the thin spot, it's doing a center walk. When it gets bigger, it's doing an edge walk. When it gets bigger than that, uh, here we've got some edge walks going on thinner areas and then zigzag and an edge walk. So it's, it's basing it on those elements as you're scaling it. It's taking that size into account. So that, again, is what auto underlay is for. It gives you a lot of flexibility. It gives you the ability to scale your designs. And if you're just not sure what you think you need, um, it definitely gives you a good starting point. So remember that that underlay is very uh, important with your designs. It stabilizes that area. Um, it's going to give you a smoother final sew out. Um, it's going to somewhat lessen the push and pull because it's, it's going in different directions usually. Um, so keep that in mind and, and definitely think about applying some underlay to your next project.